network in the realm of the spirit. I had an opportunity to eat at their home. They really won my heart. <laughs> that, that, uh, Pastor Willie can cook some greens. <laughs> and sis can cook, but what was so, so wonderful, they were so real. They were so real and so down to earth. I'm so thankful for them. But when I began to read your mission statement, you're talking about networking in the realm of the spirit. There are things, on all of you don't know about their mission statement, but I was so blessed. I tell you, I began to tear up. It doesn't take much for me. And when you all march down the aisle, I really had to start wiping my eyes. <laughs> but on their mission statement, to raise up spirit, a spirit-filled Bible school. I tell you what, we can't make it without the living word of God. I was in church for many, many years. I know what it is, pastors, to be in church without the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and I know what it is to come alive in the Holy Ghost and be in a church where the word comes alive on the inside of you. Then on their statement, they said to preserve the message of faith in Jesus Christ. We got to preserve it because it's being challenged, Amen. isn't it? Oh, yes. It's being yeah. challenged all over. We're in a time, yeah. my goodness, where even ministers of the gospel are denying the word of God, yeah. denying Amen. Jesus, denying the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. But they came, thank God, they're in our city. Glory to God. Amen. They'll be all over the world. Amen. Amen. But I thank God for the beginning right here. And then on their mission statement, I love this, to preserve the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I was like those people in the book of Acts when the apostle went there. We haven't even heard of the no, Holy Ghost. Right. <laughs> That's how I was. But I thank God for that divine vision calling me into his presence in that prayer closet. Amen. It was kind of like a Clark Kent coming out with some Superman power in the Holy Ghost. Amen. God is so good. We're not going to be before you long. I believe in two types of approaches. I thought about a commercial airliner, and you know in a commercial airliner that hauls all the passengers, it takes a real long runway, does it not? Yeah. And then it'll eventually send, the send, the send, the send, and then it'll level out, and it eventually get you to that point. I've been on commercial airlines. Yeah. But I've also stood and watched life fly. And I tell you, I'm going to be a life flight preacher today. Because what life flight does, it lifts directly up and gets you to the destination. Glory to God. Oh, it don't take all day, glory to God. And I like all day, too. Now, however the Holy Ghost wants to roll, I roll with it. But we're going to do a life flight sermon today. We're going to lift it up and take it off, and the Holy Ghost will do the rest. I want to share with you, and we're going to have time to turn to Scripture. It's okay. You can... Your Bible people, I want to honor you all too. I'm so sorry. I want to honor the graduates. Let's give them a hand. Yeah. Oh, sure. We honor you. I think Pastor uh, told me uh, there were even more students, but the storm stopped it. But I admire you all for pushing on. Yeah, anyway. In spite of the storm, yeah, anyway, sure. pushing yeah. on through. When you're hungry for the things of yeah. God, amen. But in Ephesians 2, and uh, verse 10, the Bible teaches us that we are his workmanship in Christ Jesus. Yes. I'm glad he didn't say we're a piece of work. He said we are his workmanship in Christ Jesus. And he created us for good works. And I'm so thankful this is a good work. Amen. Yes. And you all coming forth and persevering and coming to class is because in your heart you have a desire to do more good works. Amen. And then as we move down to Ephesians 4.16, the Bible teaches us that we are fitly joined together. Right. Every joint is to supply to the other joint. We are fitly joined together. We're not in it all by ourselves. Right. We're in the body yes. of Christ. Right. But my favorite is Ephesians 5 and 30 where it teaches us that we are flesh of what? His flesh and what? Bone of his bone. I was watching uh, Pastor Paul and Pastor Willie uh, TV program shortly after I got this invitation. And on this TV program, it was a policeman story, and they were trying to resolve a, a murder, a, a horrific murder, a horrific crime. And uh, I was working at, at my desk and just kind of paying a little attention to what they were saying. But all of a sudden, a specialist came on, and she was a bone analyst. And the bone analyst, they studied the human skeletal frame. So she got my attention. I pushed my chair back and I zoomed in on her because the Holy Ghost started talking. So as I was listening to that bone analyst, they was trying to solve that, that murder case. 
And when she got some of the bones into her lap, the bones had a voice, and the bones started talking. Some of the things that they learned, bone analysts, when they uh, pull the bones up, what's the word, exhume the skeleton from the, from the grave, they learn the individual sex just through the bones. They can learn the, the age of death just through the bones. They can learn the cause of death. They can learn what disease that person suffered while they were alive just through analyzing the bones. They can learn what stress occurred on the bones while that person was alive. And they can also discern what trauma the bones suffered while that person was alive. Just dealing with the bones. So I'm writing this teaching out that I'm sharing today over a period, a period of a week, I think it was. So the Holy Ghost began giving me terms that we use, all of us use out our mouth. And I'm one of those preachers talk back to me. So I'm going to start it off and you all, you all finish it talking about the bones. We use the word hurt to the bone. Amen. We use the term cut to the bone. We use the term chill. To the bone. We use the term, this isn't a good one, ugly to the bone. Y'all have heard that one. Scratch that one. <laughs> we use the term, bad to the bone. And I was writing all of this at one or two in the morning, and then this one came automatic. I wrote, I'm bone tired. <laughs> So I put my head on the pillow. You know how the Holy Ghost operates, Pastor. Yeah. All of a sudden, I leap back up. He said, I want you to talk on bone fire. Wow. We're going to talk about when Whoa. the Holy Ghost fires up the bone. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah to Come Jesus. On. In the bone, we know that. Like, weren't you a nurse in UTA? Were you in the nursing for therapist? So she really know. So I had to make sure I got all my eyes before I got here before you. <laughs> In the bone, the marrow is there. And the Bible talks about the word of God piercing even between the bone yeah. and, the, and the marrow. So in the bones is the marrow and the red blood cell, the white blood cells are there. And I've just begun studying all that is in the bone. And I know now why Elijah said, mm. it's like what? Come on now, fire shut up in my bone. So today I want to talk to you just for a moment, the voice of the bones. I want you to know we are a skeletal frame in Christ Jesus. We are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. And I want you to know there's life in the bones. So I'm going to run you back through an analogy, the DNA of what's in the bone structure. As you go out to preach, as you go out to uh, make an impact in this world, this world of darkness, this world when, where people are so hard-hearted, they don't right. even want to hear the word. On, right. And uh, But see, we got to know that inside the bone, there's some fire that'll push us to go on. Yeah. It took them something to keep pushing, coming down into a city, like you said, no good fried fish, you show sure right. <laughs> <laughs> I have to fry my own. It took something to push through. But when the fire's in the bone, you will fulfill your divine assignment. Yeah. 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 So we're going to talk about the bone analogy, the bone structure in the body of Christ. Those that have gone on before us. I want to remind you, first of all, I mentioned, I believe it was Elijah. And Elijah, I wrote down here, concern, no, we're going to, where's Elijah over here? I mentioned, and we're going to go with Job first. Everybody knows Job, the oldest yes. book in the Bible. And for Job, I wrote, Bones of Overcoming Power. Yeah. Now this DNA is inside of you. Yeah. This DNA yeah. is inside of you, and that DNA is inside of me. I want you to know in your bones is overcoming power. Yeah. And we all know what Job said, ten children died. Mm. And what would we have done? Mm. But Job said, oh my God, I love it. Though he what? Slay me. Yet will I trust him. Uh -huh. Can you trust God in the midst of trauma? Yes, Can you yes. trust God when the bottom falls out? Yes. I'll never forget many years ago the Lord gave me this statement. Daughter, when the rug of success is pulled from underneath you, the rock of salvation will still be there. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Sometimes yes. in life, what you thought was success, what we thought was all of that in a bag of chips, it can be gone. Right. Job's ten children were gone just like that. Yes. But Job said, though he slayed me, yet will I trust yes. him. God gave me an acronym for trust many years ago. Thoroughly resting upon sacred truths. Yes. We got to rest upon yes. these sacred yes. truths yes. of the Bible. Yes. No matter what we see with our natural eyes, glory yes. to God. 
Then bones of revelation. I thought about Joseph. Now Joseph, I love what he said. We all know the story. I cannot read the story of Joseph now without needing five to ten tissues. I cried through it every time. There was a movie that came on years ago, and I would say, I'm not watching it anymore. I'm not going to watch it. And every time I would watch it. You know what? Because in life, we're all going to go through some Joseph experience. We're going to go through some betrayal. Oh, yes. but to see the hand of God yes. have a purpose in the midst of it all. So Joseph's bone represents bones of revelation. Listen to what he said. But as for you, you thought evil against me. Come on now. That's what he said to his brothers. Uh -huh. As for you, you thought evil against me. But God. See, I like that. But God. But God meant it until good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Yeah. When you can look in the midst of your pain and see the revelatory hand of God working even in the midst of it. Oh, I tell you what. You are walking in revelation with God. But so many give up and just begin to talk about God like Job's wife did. But Job could see, I mean, Joseph could see in the midst of it, with all that his devil's brothers did to betray yeah, him. Yeah. In the end, you meant it for harm. But God, yeah. see, God will turn it around for good for yes, you today. Yeah. I don't know what you're going through, but trust God. He has the master plan in his life. Right. Yeah. Then we're going to go to the bones. I love this one, dealing with Elijah. Oh, Elijah was a bad boy. He was bad to the bone. But Elijah, glory to God, he didn't mind defying the power of darkness. Elijah flatfoot stood up on Mount Carmel and mocked that false god. He said, cry a little louder. Maybe your god is asleep. See, and this, that's right, taking a nap. In this day and time, we got to know who our god is so that we can defy the power of darkness. As Pastor Paula mentioned in my book, I do need to go back and reread it because I was just started writing. You when you walk with him so long, there's so much in there. But I do remember this called a table in the presence of my enemy. And I remember when I was doing uh, the four convalescent home. I was on the third day of a fast. I was getting ready to break the fast in order to go minister at that particular convalescent home. And the Holy Ghost said, continue the fast. I went over there about, I don't know, six or seven women. They would come to my Bible study every week. It was only one man in that convalescent hall, Mr. Nipples, I'll never forget. And he would always say, I'm not coming in there with a bunch of cackling women. <laughs> so he wouldn't come. We had a registered nurse on uh, duty. And why am I forgetting her name? It's in the book. And I saw her not long ago, a few years ago. But anyway, I opened my Bible, began teaching the Bible study, and I heard her scream down the hall, scream to the top of her voice. I put my Bible down by my chair. I ran down that hall, and she screamed out, Peggy is her name. Peggy said, I knew this would happen on my ship. I knew it would happen. Pat, he's dead. And she loved Mr. Nichols. He was a sweetheart, even though he's fussing at everybody. I knew this would happen. Call 911. So I ran over and picked up the phone, and right before I could hit the nine, like she said, you got to hear the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Oh, hallelujah. He said, go and call his spirit back in his body. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. glory yeah. to God. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. I put the phone down, went and stood over Mr. Nichols. I commanded his spirit to come back in his body. He was on the floor. Nothing showing but white. He was gone. Peggy had already checked his vitals. She was a registered nurse. And it was and long Mr. Nipple straightened up the eyes got back in order the go. mouth had fallen it snapped back oh, and he sat up and he said what happened <laughs> Peggy said you died <laughs> that's the gospel that's the gospel resurrection power in the gospel. resurrection power in these bones amen again we are flesh of his what Flesh and bone of his bone. This dwells inside of us. You don't always have to call Pastor Willie, Pastor Paula when something go wrong. You got resurrection power in your bones. You got to activate it. Glory to God. So Mr. Nichols got up. He never missed another Bible study. He lived another four years and he said, when I go, I want you to do my funeral. See, he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. But God. But God, God. Glory to God. So that was Elijah.
just DNA. He didn't mind dealing with and defying the power of darkness. Yes. See, we're going to have to defy these things that are coming against the principles and the truths of the yeah. word of God. Yeah. But what is happening a lot, I see a lot of compromise. Well, you know. Come on now. Well, you know this young generation. No. no. I know the truths and the principles yes. of the word of God. Yes. He said, come out. Yeah. from among them and be ye what? Separate, separate, says the Lord. We have to live a separate and holy life if we're going to make an impact in this world. Yeah. All right now. Then we have the bones of double portion. We know who that was. Who was that? Elisha. The bones of double portion. And I love the story of Elisha talking about bones. All of you Bible students, I know you remember the story. But Elisha had died and his bones were in a tomb. So later on, they were having a funeral of another man there in the village. And here come a whole band of robbers and thieves and going to upset the people there at the grave site when they got ready to run. But they decided they would throw the dead man's body yeah. up in their own type of Elisha's bones. Do y'all know what happened? Yeah. Dead man got up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We talked about, yes, resurrected Pastor Willie said, yeah. fire bones. Yeah. We're going to need some fire bones, bones for fire. this time, yeah. for such a time as this. Yeah. Fire in yeah. the bone. Through that yeah. dead body on type of Elisha's bone. How would you like for your bones to be like Come that? Come on now. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> See, I tell God, no matter how good we think we are, we made it, we still got a long ways to go. Yeah. Yeah. How would you like to walk by like Peter and the shadow fall yeah. upon yeah. somebody yeah. 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 and they get up? Yeah. Yeah. See, there's much to be gained. Mm -hmm. As we yes, keep walking with God. God. There's yes. much to desire yes. as we keep walking with God. Yes. I see it. Uh, Pastor Paul is like a big smorgasbord. God, God's yes. table. Yes. There's yes. so much yes. on the table. Yes. I tell you what, and I tell him, Lord, I want a taste of it. Uh -huh. I want a taste of it. I want to know what it is. Mm. Glory to Hallelujah. God. So we just dealt with Elisha's bone, the bones of double portion. Are you believing God for more? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. hallelujah. Yes. Then we have the bones of prophecy. I wrote that for Ezekiel. Because he was the one that went out there to where that grave, y'all? And he prophesied. Let me read it, what he said. He says, so I prophesied. Starts off, so I prophesied. That's Ezekiel 37 and 7. So I prophesied. We got to know that life and death is in the power of the tongue. We got to learn how to prophesy to a dead, stinking situation. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, it says a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to bone, just through the word of prophecy. See, I know what it is to have to prophesy to many are dead situations but one in particular I quickly mentioned and I didn't bring my red comeback boot but many years ago we were giving those meetings at our home people getting saved people getting filled with the Holy Ghost and the power of darkness didn't like it we stepped out to serve God totally like you all did stepped out and all of a sudden the finances begin to bottom out we had started a little business and everything began to go downhill and I tell you it got worse then I had some friends like Job's friend. They began talking about it. Right. Oh, my goodness. We had to hear all type of stuff. But you know what? I just kept my eyes focused on him. Yes. And I'll never forget my baby daughter, who was almost seven years old. She was actually six. I had taught them that God gives revelation and dream. And I taught them when God gives you a dream, you share it with mama. Six-year-old girl, almost seven, and the Lord visited her in a dream. I think I put it in the book. So in the dream, she said, uh, Mom, and I have it on cassette tape, and I had it dropped over the CD. I want to save this forever to bless people. She said, Mama, I saw in a dream, and Satan came. She said, and he had all of these angels with him. She knew it was like a demonic force with him. Satan and his angels, she said. And she said, in the dream, Satan said, I've come to tear your house down. So she watched. She said the house came up in the air. See, God was showing her spiritual warfare. Right. She said the house came up in the air. And she said the walls began to fall as the house was in the air. 
She said, I watched as all the walls fell down. Have it on tape, six-year-old talking. She said, then God came. <laughs> she said he had white hair on his shoulders. Right. And God said, I've come to reveal your house. Uh -huh. So she says to God, she said in the dream, six years old, and my older daughter, she's five years older than her. She, and we call her Benji. Her name is Benjamin. So my, my baby daughter says to God, can Benji and me help you, God? <laughs> That's sweet. She said, God said, I got it all by myself. He raised his arms up, and she said, the walls went up on the house in the realm of the spirit. She didn't know it was the realm of the spirit. She said, in the sky. Well, I want you to know it grew worse. I want you to know we got put out of that house. We didn't even have money to rent a, a building to put our furniture in. So all we could do was just trust God. Mm -hmm. So one day I'm standing at the window when all the big trucks roll up to take all my furniture I'd worked for an excellent for years. They roll up and they begin loading up the stuff. One guy was so ugly. And, but it went just like my daughter said. She said the walls fell down. Mm -hmm. She said but then God came. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are over in some apartments where they literally brought a SWAT truck. That's how tough those apartments were. The SWAT truck truck had to live there for a little while. Yeah. So anyway, uh, shooting's going on around us, even right through the wall. But see, she said, God would wave his hands and restore it. Suddenly, after almost seven years, see, we got to learn to wait on the Lord. Wait on it. He may not come when you want him, what the old folks say, but he's always oh, on time. Come on. I get a phone call. Are you the family that lived at, and they gave me my address, and I went, uh, that be me? Well, we're getting ready to sell the house. We've heard so much about you in this neighborhood. I was having church there. Cars were blocking the street there. They all knew us. We've heard so much about you. We wanted you to be the first to know that we're selling this house. Uh -huh. Now look at how God networked the Pastor uh -huh. Paula. We left broke in the natural, but then he, money in him. Yeah. So we got to come up with, uh, with, I think, $500 or something to get to... Get the, get the deal rolling. Like, where am I going to get $500? But God knows With everything. God. Right. I had just cut my first CD, the first one I ever did. They came in right when the people called with the, telling me the house was sale. Went to church and made six hundred and something dollars the first sale. All right, look all at right. All right. You tell me about what's in the bones, Amen. Resurrection, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, trust, Amen. Yeah. Trust yeah. in God. Glory yeah. to God. Glory God to took God. us right back, and when we got in the house, there was a check. I don't know how that got pulled off. A three a four hundred dollar check on the bar yeah. waving from the the company what the mortgage company i don't know i didn't ask nothing i learned what my mama said don't lift don't look a gift horse in the mouth i just, <laughs> I just cast in glory to god oh hallelujah and i have got to mention these bad girls i got to mention to you Deborah. oh hallelujah deborah's one of my favorite ladies in the bible what we learned through deborah's bone she went up on that hillside and she sang. I'm so glad they put the praise and worship up. She sang as the warfare went on down the right. And we know there was a victory. Sometime I tell you, you got to sing a prophetic song to your own sin. Yes. But the Bible said he'll give us a song of deliverance. He'll give us a new song, glory to God. See, when we were believing God for our home right before they put us out there, we've been there two years with them trying to put us out. And I began to march around. I have an island in the middle of home. And I would quote the word of God. The lights were on. The water was on. Right. The gas was on. But I would stomp and say, I am the head and not the head. Head. Oh, 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 only and oh, not the yeah. There is power in the name of Jesus in the word of God. Life and death is where? In the power of the tongue. And my little girls, they made it just a little fun time. When I would say it, they would quote it. So I'd say, I'm the head and not the tail. They go, I'm your head and not the tail. See, we wore a three-fold card in the yeah. natural on earth. Yeah. And yeah. Father, yeah. Son, and Holy Ghost were working yeah. Yeah. it in heaven. Yeah. 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 Glory to God. We got to learn to prophesy. Yeah. Deborah sat on that prophesy. hillside and she sang prophetically. When you pray in your heavenly language, sometimes we don't know what we're saying. Sometimes we don't get the interpretation. But pray anyhow. Let the Holy Ghost get loose on the inside of you. And then, of course, we know J.L. who worked with Deborah. 
Come that bad now. sister drove that nail right through the enemy's yep. head. Amen. Right. Through prayer, obeying God, prophesying, fasting. Amen. You can nail the enemy to the floorboard just like J.L. did. Yes, yes. And then Esther, I love. See, sometimes it's going to cost us something. She realized that she could lose her very life going before that king. She said, but if I perish, I perish. But she said, I'm going to do this thing. <laughs> we got to get to the place where I'm going to do this thing like the pastors did. If it's two, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to persevere. Amen. We can't lock our focus on what we're seeing in the natural but on obeying him in the realm of the spirit. Amen. Have I gone my hour? I'm trying to quit. I'm at the end. I'm at the end here. And then, okay, we have, of course, the bones of Jesus. Because all that we talked about, we as the skeleton frame, we are flesh of his flesh and bones of his bone. And the Bible teaches us in John 19 and 36, not a bone was broken. And his body, when they crucified him, not a bone was broken because it spoke of us. We're in him. Hallelujah. Now, when the God gave me the sermon, fired bones, a bones fired, F-I-R-E-D. He took me all the way back to a conversation that he and Abraham had. Abraham was out there on land that he inherited. But, there, you know, he, he inherited through God's word, but there was nothing built there. He just had to believe God for it. And God begins to speak to Abraham and say, this is your land. He begins to tell him about how his descendants would go down into Egypt. It's a conversation between God and Abraham where God cut covenant with Abraham. And in that conversation, if you remember, God told Abraham, it all started with a dream, Sister Paul, a vision. So God tells Abraham to go and get five sacrifices. One was a turtle dove, one was a pigeon, one was a ram, uh, one was a heifer, and which is a cow, I believe. I forgot to look it up. Heifer cow. My mama used to say that and we get stubborn. We're not going to tell her she's in heaven. You stubborn heifer. <laughs> I learned a heifer cow is very stubborn. And then the other sacrifice was a goat, a she goat. So he had to get those five things. Five is the number of what? Grace. So God tells him to get those, and then he tells them him he has to cut that those the carcass those animals right down the middle and he has to lay that carcass right there because God is coming to cut covenant with Abraham and what is a carcass dead meat with bones because we're talking about bones bones fire and God began to tell me I wrote this down like the third night of getting this sermon together he said I'm gonna take you back to when the bones got fire oh hallelujah and if you remember there, when he put those carcasses there, those bones, all of a sudden there came in the NLT version, it says a fire pot. And then it says a torch moved through those bones. One, the King James says a smoking furnace walked through those bones. God said, that's when I was firing up the bone. Yeah. It was a type and shadow of firing up the bone. Way back with our father, Abraham, yeah. the bones got fired. It was a type and shadow. God was showing what he would do for us this day. We are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. I tell you what, I have just lived on that principle. I have. We're going to prophesy of ourselves today as we close because some... I don't know if you're here or not, or maybe somebody in your family member going through even some diseases that start in the bone a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Arthritis try to attack us on our journey. Oh, but we're going to chase some stuff out today. Amen. And we're going to do it in the most funny way. I'm going to let Pastor, uh, Pastor Willie and Pastor uh, Paula see this first. Give them a second to see and go approve it right up here in front of everybody. But do y'all remember that? We've just uh, passed these out Amen. one, one, two. I don't know if everybody will get one, but you all are going to laugh when you see that. I don't think I think I'm about 20 something. But I, I laughed. I was really on my way out the door when he had me run, run some copies of that. Some of you can share. But I'm telling you, this bone sermon, I, I, I've been living by it since I got it, since Sister Paula called. Oh my goodness, I went in the store, Sister Paula, and I've never seen in my life, maybe I ignored it. I'm always buying broth. I would see beef broth, chicken broth. Do you know I saw bone broth? Yes. Right. I just saw it after you invited me. And I guess uh -huh. I'm in the store going, oh my God, bone broth. I came home and told my daughter, bone broth. I'm telling you this word 
this determination, graduates, has to be down in the bone. Yeah. I tell you, move on. You've already been moving out in the Holy Ghost. Right. But move out even more. Glory to God. Right. And Sister Paula Wright that laid out, I'll hem them up. I hemmed up one, one. We like to say they're trying to decide their identity. And I don't crucify them, but I let them know that's not what God has for you. I had one hemmed up in the bathroom. <laughs> She transformed herself all the way over. But I detected what it was. I said, when did you? She's looking down and somebody opened the door. Never. But anyway, I was over shopping. I think I'm told this. We're gonna we're gonna sing this. I was shopping at a thrift shop. I love thrift shop. And so I'm digging. I look down and I see some feet. I think you heard me tell that story, didn't you? I saw some feet hanging off the back of some beach walkers. We call them beach walkers. So I just followed up. <laughs> And here was this man in this skirt and beach, and his feet was what I noticed. Like, oh my goodness. So I went, Holy Ghost, give me a word, because I'm going in. I'm going in. That's my word. I'm going in. And I'm telling you, he checked out his, his stuff. He was going, and I, right before it got out the door, sir, I got a word for you. <laughs> he turned around, me, right there in front of everybody. I said, The Lord said he'll be a better lover than you than any lover you ever had. Oh, he didn't know. Oh. And I got a chance to talk to him about Jesus and lead him to the center center spring. My brother, he walked, I don't know. God said one plant, one water. He will be the increase. Amen. Then I was in Marshalls right here in Baytown. We're going to read this. And I'm, I looked up the back doors of the original Marshall. And this man was so exceedingly tall. That's what got my attention. So I just went down. He had on stilettos higher than any of us in the world. <laughs> Real. <laughs> I dropped my head in my bag. I said, I'm going in. Give me some. I'm going in. He said, we're going into a bumblebee's nest and a battleground. Yeah, so yeah. I found him over there in the lingerie department. I went right on over there. I began to talk about him. Sir, I got a word for you from the Lord. And he began listening. The tears began coming down. He said, I only do this for an, an outlet. This is my outlet. He'd come all the way from Boma. Oh, yeah. And he would come all the way down here to Baytown to walk in his stiletto. Yeah. Oh, but I prayed for him right there. People looking around gawking. I prayed for come him on, right there and he Amen. cried. Amen. God gave a word for him. Amen. We have to realize what's in our glory. glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Realize what's yeah. in your glory. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to, those that can, stand to your feet. Did y'all see this little funny? I love it. I, love it. Yeah. I grew up with this and I'm so glad I looked it up because I forgot. To the headphones, oh, hear the word of the Lord. Them bones, them bones, gonna walk around. Them bones, them bones, gonna walk around. Them bones, them bones, gonna walk around. Oh, hear the word of the Lord. Glory to God. Father, we release it, Lord God. We release resurrection power even in this baby right here in this chair. We thank you, Lord God, that the life and the fire is in the bones. And Father, we just ask that that same fire that walked through that sacrifice back there with, with Abraham, that's the fire being ignited and loosed in this child. Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak health and healing and set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.